What is up? Welcome back to the show. I am once again joined by a guest. Today, I am joined by David. So it is the David and David podcast because my real name is David, but I go by Lurk. Your name is David and you go by Jarhead from what I hear. And you are the front man for the band Jarhead Fertilizer. And drummer. And drummer. Okay, so you're one of the... uh, you one of those dual role kind of guys. Do you have the Britney Spears mic? Uh, no, I don't have that. We're working on something, maybe though, maybe something cool. I don't know. Sorry. I would love a hands free mic, but you know, it's never, it's never like that. Do it's you, always, it's always like the just, mic will be flailing like far away while I'm trying to still play and like catch it, you know. But interesting, it is what it is. Struggles. <laughs> it's the struggles of life. Yeah. We just had on. Uh, I'm trying to remember which band. Gosh, we just had on. I don't know. We had a drummer on recently and he was the singer too. Or, uh, previously in the band, he was doing vocals or something like that. And he had a Britney Spears mic. That's why I asked. Oh, I love it. I love this. There's, there's plenty of bands that pull that off. You know, it's like, it's, there's plenty of bands that pull off when it's all like Nocturnus, you know, the mm-hmm. drummer, he's mm-hmm. got a full on Britney Spears mic while he's ripping. I love that. It's, it's so interesting because uh, the only time, I guess the only time I really ever saw that in like the scene and this was like way early on, so I haven't really been paying attention. But from Autumn to Ashes had, you know, their drummer. I remember seeing them when they had a, a legit singer, like a legit frontman and the drummer yeah. singer. But I, I think at some point the drummer just took over altogether. But you don't see it that often. No, no, no. It's never, it's never. But there's other bands that do like a, you know, like like a mask situation, like Lightning Bolt. He's got like a. Ryan chippendale has got some like crazy mass mm-hmm. deal going on with like a telephone receiver. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. How how hard is it to like do both of those things? Are you the sole vocalist or, or the main? I'm vocalist? like main main vocalist. Okay. Uh, the guitar player Sam he does like some like pitch shifted vocals on the new record, um, and then our our other guitar player he also does um, some. Brandon he also does like uh, some of the vocals, but his is pretty different than mine at least vocal sound but for me for the most part i'm doing mainly all the vocals cool and how much of a like workout or how strenuous and how hard and difficult is it to play this style of music which we'll get into but to to play this style of music and handle the main vocal duties yeah so i mean it's it's like it's a different it's insane it's a completely different from just playing drums like my other band full of hell we uh that is, I mean, it's hard because that one's a little bit more technical, I feel like, with the drumming. But when I'd like go into a show for Jarhead, it's like compared to Full of Out, it's like it's so different just because like you're like literally like gasping, you know, nonstop for air while you're playing. It's like I'm blowing air out while playing. So to get those two to like work together and be on time, it's pretty crazy. I give it up to some of like the guitar players that are doing vocals and stuff. I mean, I know you're not like running around and stuff like that, but and they like just to think and do vocals at the same time and like try to remember lyrics is it's a whole another game you know it's well like, i think i think that the same could be said about playing drums i think a guitar player could say the same thing i feel yeah. like it would be it would be a little bit more difficult there's definitely a little bit more of like uh physical demand for it you know it's it's that's definitely there more than you know the other side but it's hard it's hard. I definitely, but like, you know, a few, few days in the tour for Jarhead, I've noticed that it's like no problem after that. Then I notice it's like way more comfortable. I get like easy. I mean, I'll be losing weight, but it's like, it's, it's all good. You know? Yeah. I was going to say, do you get your, you have to, do you work out prior to tour to get ready for that? I, I usually work out a decent amount. I'm like, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty up on par with keeping fit at least, you know, uh, <laughs> it just depends. It just depends. Unless I'm not, unless I'm some tours, I'll go in the tour, like, I've been partying for a whole month, you know, and then I go into tour like that. And then sometimes I go in and I'm like, oh, I'm so fit. I'm ready. You know, I just, whatever. My life's up and down. Yeah. It just <laughs> depends if, you know, Mercury is in retrograde or something like that. And mm-hmm. if you've been a night yeah. owl or not. Um, so <clears throat> what, I mean, the last kind of, the last kind of release that Jarhead did was, because this is your debut album, which, te- which technically comes out tomorrow when we're recording this. But it's been out for a couple of weeks now, and I'm sure you're getting all the accolades for it at this particular point when the listener is listening to it. But um, what's the big difference between the debut record, like the sound of the the style of the debut record, compared to your previous 
singles and splits it's like it's very it's very different for sure yeah. um the last release was six years ago so the band has like just been slowly evolving um basically the band started um like i said just a side project of mine really where i wanted to start something where i wrote everything in the band uh so when you say everything I, like all music like the, in, in all lyrics? like every single part of the band i write so it's like lyrics you know all riffs all the just you know curated i'm not they those dudes they add some stuff you know just like to things i present to them and everything but it's it's it started really as my like my baby basically you know my project it's just a long slide of full hell just something that i really write everything but um full of hell was doing so much at a certain point in time i mean for the last like a long uh, last 10 years it's been really hard yeah. so it's for jarhead to like keep active was difficult for me just with different parts of my life going on and everybody else in jarhead too just different things happening all the time so six years is a long time and people were definitely like on me to get because the lp had been written for like three years maybe before it was recorded but people, and it finally got to a point where like uh, i guess i got annoyed enough where i was like all right i will go record the album so everybody's like happy you know and it's definitely the best decision i knew i would do it but it's the best decision i ever made i'm glad people were kind of like pushing you on up my ass a little bit about it because yeah. it got done and it, it, it came out exactly how i wanted but the the music is pretty the older stuff is definitely much more like, like straightforward grindcore kind of yeah. the more like noisy aspect of it of maybe like iron lung slightly like kind of um you know influence power violence and with like some west coast style as well um you know but the new the newer stuff is much more like of a death metal influence for sure um yeah. there's still like some grind influence definitely a decent amount on the record but compared to the last stuff um it's it's definitely like pretty you know it's it's different for sure it's definitely a deep, it's it's a little i mean everything's in the same tuning and everything it's just that it's it's a little heavier for sure yeah um i think this is definitely the music we want to play. We used to play with two bass players. So there are our one guitar player, Brandon, he used to play bass as well. So we were one guitar player, two vote, um, two bass players, and you know, me playing drums and doing vocals. But as time went on, I mean we just decided to go with two guitars. It just sounded way better. Uh and I'm glad for this record, it's the first one with two guitars rather than two bass players. I'd like to be in like the ignorant aspect of having two bass players and one guitar player, but yeah in like the reality setting of sounding like, I guess, a good band, if I even care about that, uh, is that's that's where, you know, we had to get two guitar players at yeah. least for this record. It was a good, it was a good decision for sure. It's curious as to why you would arrive at having two ba bass players anyway, like sonically. I mean, granted, you just kind of admitted that the ignorance part of it is part of the allure to you guys, but... <laughs> Like, would one guy just cover the low, low ends and then one guy cover the high, low ends? Is that one one dude works? had a cleaner tone. One dude had, like, a ah. very much dirtier tone. So it was definitely a lot, like, bass-heavier driven music. It was basically, I mean, it's more of, like, an influence from, like, Man is the Bastard or something in the early day, but we still wanted to have guitar in the band as well. We did make it work as best as we could. It just sonically was not the best decision, I think. Um I, I, people liked it and people were like, why did you get a two guitars? But I'm glad it sounds, it's, it's much better. 100%. Yeah, the, yeah. I can uh, agree to that. I've been, been listening to it um, for the past like day and a half uh, since the, uh, the PR people gave me the record then. Uh, but you have a couple singles already out that probably people have already been listening to. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the names on the top of my head without looking at it. Some like NARC. Silence the Narc. Silence the Narc, yeah. And then you got um, God, it's Product of My Environment. That's the uh, mm -hmm. title of the album, is it not? Yeah, it's the title of the album, yeah. I'm doing really well pulling these out of the top of my head. So the third mm -hmm. one, God, I'm trying to figure it. I'm trying to remember it. Uh, yeah, okay. We're going to pass on the third one. I don't, I'm blanking on it. Baptized by Fire. Baptized by Fire, yes. That's the one. Uh, is that the oldest one that you guys have had out? That's the first one. That's yeah. the first one. Yeah, yeah. I definitely noticed a, a drastic difference in sound, not in a negative way or a positive way, but definitely they're two different kinds of situations. Granted, like you said, they're six years apart, um, mm -hmm. 
But yeah. Also, my voice like got deeper, so I can't really do highs like I used to. Like all the old vo- like vocals are like a shrill high vocals, mm-hmm. and then like something happened without like being very inactive in the band and not doing that for a while. I mean, it just like it went away completely, and that's cool. I mean, maybe it'll come back. I don't know. I, with practice, I guess. But yeah, you have to yeah, work that, it. it. It's pretty much yeah. It's pretty much just. It's all I can do, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. lows. <laughs> there's a little, yeah, there's a, even a little bit of like a black metal kind of vibe to it. And there's definitely grindcore parts to it again. And I think a lot of that comes through in your drumming, actually. There's a lot of like blast beat style, you know, uh, stuff going on on the drums. And the, to where like the guitars may not be playing traditional grindcore type music, but, you know, there's nuances all over the place of those three big genres, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. There's definitely, I mean, there's definitely an influence from everything. I don't know. For me, writing everything is also like sometimes songs start just with drums, you know, without like the riffs being fully written. Okay. So like beats will be there, but the guitar part isn't necessarily what I'll have or like what I want at that time. And it'll be like tweaked in my head until it like gets perfect, which is like slightly different because I think some of the times like this album is much more groove based um, because I think most of it just starts strictly with like drums that I want to a certain style of riff that I have in mind. Maybe the riff isn't fully written yet. So like sometimes like play, things will have like the drum part and the riff will be like half written and we'll still practice for like a long time until like it's like fully like, oh, I want it to be like exactly this. So. It's kind of cool. It works in like an odd way, which I think most bands don't operate on sometimes. All right. And do you guys... Some of ask- my favorite records are written just by drummers, you know? So it's like... <laughs> yeah. Well, you being a drummer, I think that you would kind of lean that way in, in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's there's something special maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so when you when you say you write the whole album, do you do you write it with other people? Like, do you bounce ideas off of other people? or And are there other people, the people that you have had... Uh, that you have in the band per se right now or because when you when do you record it yourself as well do you record all the instruments yourself we, re- we record as a full band okay. we record as a full band um i yeah because like i don't want to it's not like i never try to make it seem like it's like just like like just my band or like these guys get like pushed out of the way because everybody like plays like a pretty important role at this point in the band and it's like these are like we we all grew up together so like we're like the you know this is like the best friends band like everybody everybody loves each other in this band and it's like it's just it was cool to start that like they'd be that way from the start basically and um um yeah but those dudes i mean no it's they they add stuff as well like they'll they'll like especially like you know the guitarists they'll bounce kind of like weird you know um just different harmonic parts off each other and stuff like that so they definitely add the things that i like present to them you know i like to think of of it as like a thin lizzy situation Mm. more so where it's kind of like you know phil giving everybody like a stripped down part and like it kind of builds more and more onto each time they practice kind of kind right. of deal you're just giving the building blocks to everything like the foundation and yeah. everyone's building on top of that but also i mean uh, i never they don't really like i mean I, we bounce ideas off each other and if anybody was ever like no i don't want that to sound like this or i don't like that i don't like that riff then like totally we wouldn't do it you know uh so I, it's not like, but I luckily they don't hate my ideas. So that's what's cool. <laughs> How did you fall into like, because, you know, Full of Hell is also very, you know, grind quarry and, and, and a little bit of death metal, sludge metal and all over the place, power violence, all that stuff. How did you kind of fall into this, you know, crack of music, you know, just because it's so uh, extreme for the most part? Yeah. I mean, um, since I was a kid, I've always listen to i was definitely like i kind of grew up in a smaller town at least um like half about like 10 years in baltimore than the other the rest of my life has been um in ocean city maryland so the guitar player in full of hell um i started playing that band when i was 15. um i did the first tour when i was 15. i was like still in high school um and like i didn't tell my parents really hardly about it like that i was like i was like look this band wanted me to go on tour they kind of thought i was like joking and then i was like it was just like August and it was like one, four weeks. I was like, I'm going. And they were like, what are you talking about? No, you're not. I was like, all right. And I did left, you know? So I went on that. I did that. Like I started doing that. And luckily from then it was 
nonstop pretty much after that. But I will say that like I was into like punk and different stuff like that growing up. Um, just my dad kind of was into some cool music as well. And Maryland's but, pretty much like a death metal zone too. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, maybe my dad was like listening to like, you know, just probably like Slayer and things like this, like a lot of like thrash shift and stuff like that. And like the normal things like a Black Sabbath to like grow up on and things like that. But um being so young, I was still into that. I was like the only drummer in the area, basically. So the guitar player full of hell was probably twenty years old, I think. Yeah, twenty he would have been like twenty at the time. So like really joining that that early, he really like showed me a lot and and you know um definitely like opened my ears to that style of music which has been basically like you know since then obviously like the main main genre but i mean i don't know as as time goes on you get into so many different things right. you know like i still love like tons of jazz things like that you know um it's not just strictly crying for it necessarily for me and it's not somehow i guess i've i mean full of hell's done a lot of other styles right. of albums and stuff like that but um for jarhead i like it like i this is like my like grittiest style of whatever ignorant thing that i would like it to be at that time is gonna be you know it's a whatever i want band basically yeah yeah <laughs> that's know? good that's cool yeah it's cool you have an outlet you know you can throw yeah. in like any kind of gimmicky thing you want to no and no pushback because it's not your band technically but your band yeah, no. The next album, next album will be a, 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 a split with the rapper, nice, which is TBA. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, Do you have a timeline on that? Because obviously, uh, you're there's no time. Album. There's no timeline necessarily, just because of, you know, like we're writing, but I'm writing, but it's it's like COVID is kind of thrown a right. big wrench in my life for sure. You know. Do um so speaking of COVID and all that shit, obviously you've had time to work on Jarhead stuff because it's mainly you. Uh, but mm -hmm. have you and the other guys gotten together or done anything as far as for uh, Full Hell? Yeah, we just did an LP. Um, we just recorded in Rhode Island at uh, oh, yeah. Machines with Magnets. Um, that I think will probably be out sometime in the summertime. I cool. imagine, but that's like a solo LP for Relapse. Um, and we also did, um, while we we're recording that, like a live set for Decibel as well. Um, so those two things, that's the, the last two things. Full of Hell has definitely been active. Um, Jarhead has been, uh, still as active as we can be really with this. Um, we'll, we'll do a music video as well soon. And then I have other plans of, um, Full of Hell probably like at least music wise, we, we still have like a couple, like one other thing in the works as well um, that we're going to get record for. But um, for Jarhead, yeah, we're we're just doing that music video. And then I, I have plans of doing a solo drum album in the summertime. That's like the, the last thing that I have plans. And hopefully something will, you know, by like wintertime next year, there will be like some sort of hope for maybe a tour somewhere <laughs> right but, at some point sometime you know i don't like to like be like oh this is you know but that's everybody is like you know it's one of those things where you just book a tour and then it's like all right we'll cancel it when it comes right, time right. To do it. so like if november rolls around and we can't do said tour we'll just you know wait until the next one comes around i guess whenever that might be but you know hopefully there's like some eye-opening <laughs> <laughs> <Situation laughs> shit happened. that might yeah. happen you know, well, and this did the last time. That'll be that would be good. Uh, but I'm kind of starting to think we may be pushing it back to next year, even. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's fucking crazy. I mean, you guys, you would, you guys would know more than me because you guys actually deal in that industry, and you would be talking with people in that industry and knowing. I mean, right now, like it seems like even the bigger bands is like November seems to be the the end of November seems to be the awakening of when you can tour but yeah um I, it's hard it's so hard to say at this point like yeah just you know, like you said you I'm, just you book it and then you hope yeah and yeah. but like it's like is is live music going to be changed forever like are there going to be restrictions in certain countries for what you can do or how many people can come still for a while like i don't mm. know it yeah. can be fucked up other places maybe not us but <laughs> probably not us but <laughs> 
Everywhere else, well, there might be some restrictions that are, you know, there permanently. I don't know. Oh, you mean permanently, permanently? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not permanently, but maybe even for like a year or two. You know, right, right, right. Say. Like limited, limited gatherings for a year or so. Limited gatherings or like, yeah, it's hard. It's so hard to say. What or they be. just go like whole 1984 and you have to have your little vaccination card with you all the time. That's what I'm saying. That that might be a thing. It's sort of, well, certain countries, I think, kind of probably want to do that. You know, I don't know. Well, I know Live Nation has been definitely, and I, uh, I don't want to say definitely, but I heard, I've heard Live Nation has been toying with the idea of possibly making that a, uh, making that a thing for, to attend their events. Yeah, which like especially the corporate places and shit like that. I bet you, you know, not but like bigger like companies like that. You know, yeah, yeah for sure. Not company. like small like bar club venues or something like that. Yeah, they they want people, so <laughs> I'm sure they'll do whatever sure. they can at this point. They've been hurting for a long for a long time. It'll be at that point. Um, they are doing some events like here in Florida. Like I previously told you, I was from Florida, and we've been pretty much open the entire time. But they've been doing like, has been open, very open. Like bars have been like there's some bars that still just don't even care in this in this area. It's really yeah. pretty crazy. Nice. Get the old traditional ringer. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we've been open for a while and uh they are starting to do like like comedy events are starting to come here and it it is limited seating though in those, so um, but yeah, it, it was funny. The last podcast I recorded with Brandon Sacrifice, I asked, "What are some things that you think will carry over that were positive from COVID that bands are doing? That bands are doing now that may carry over for when the restrictions and all that stuff let up and touring resumes." I'm oh, sorry. What'd you say again? <laughs> this phone, this this phone call really. really no, you me I was. We were talking about some of like the you know the negative. Can uh, the negative takeaways probably from COVID that may be in, you know, like with the restrictions and blah, blah, blah going forward. Uh, but with Brandon Sacrifice, I was talking with him about what are some of the positive things that w- may come from, you know, this whole pandemic with bands having to kind of like rethink how to have income streams and revenue come in. Yeah. I mean, I guess like, damn, it's crazy. I mean, the only positives, I don't know. I don't know. I like the live setting. So for me, like any of the digital shit is like, I mean, that's like a cool plus, I guess, if you can add that or figure out more of a way to like incorporate that into your band. But for me, I'm like, I'd rather just play live. I mean, always a hundred percent, you know, and like maybe you have more time to throw into recording or maybe you have this time to take off for practicing and you get a little better at your instrument. That's a positive, but like for me, like the most positive thing out of, like writing any of the music is playing it live because like recording is cool and all but it's really like live is the the best thing and the more people the better so like i only want to play to more people i mean that's not that's (laughs) not like the most that's not important to me like i'll play like one person that's cool but obviously like you know there's no like secret that like if there's more people at your show you're probably going to be more like you're going to be oh yeah 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 well you're also the vibe is just going to be better you're feeding off of more people and the performance is better yeah like it's live is the is always the best i mean so for me i don't know i mean there is a couple positives like the practicing and stuff like that that aspect and like the throwing a little bit more time into writing but i don't know this time is out of this covid shit it's, it's hard for me to pull any positives out of this situation for you. the most part you I know it's you. like it's a pretty negative time. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I try to pull positive shit out of it, but it's all of it to me. I'm like, damn, all of this is pretty fucking. It, it's definitely harsh. been a bummer, you know, it is because yeah. we've, um, <clears throat> as, as you are accustomed to being at shows and playing shows and attending shows, I, I am as well. And like, it really took, uh, and we usually do these podcasts in person, you know what I mean? Up until the pandemic. So, when bands would come to town, they would just come over and, you know, we would just record a podcast. So I prefer that as well compared to this. But um, with the gap that's been this year of no shows, it really uh, it really affects you if you attend shows regularly. You know what I mean? Like whether it be an attendee or a performer. But like, damn, 
it, you know, it's just something that I've always done for most of my adult life. Ever since I was like a teenager, you know, I started going to shows. Yeah. <clears throat> and it just, it just became a thing. It came like a part of me all the time. So like, even as an adult, I still go to like small, you know, small bar shows and shit and see like up and coming bands or, you know, big festivals. So. I mean, this is like the biggest part of my life. I mean, yeah. I based my entire life like the, on this, you know what I mean? So to be able to like, it's not that I can't do it because obviously there's ways, like you said, that you can find to like, you know, still create and still do things. But for me, I mean, it's more than half of it is the live. So like to have that kind of ripped away, it's like, it's annoying if anything, you know, that's what I would say like the most, the, it sucks and it's annoying, you know, and there's no good part about this shit. Right. You know, it's just, it's, it is what it is though. Um, how, how difficult is, is it for you to juggle both, both bands and is it, does, is anyone else in the band also in it? Just like, obviously they probably are in a different band since Jarhead doesn't, isn't your full time thing, but I know, yeah. uh, Sam is also in full of hell. So, uh, yeah, Sam's also and our other guitar player Brandon is the ex bass player Full of Hell okay. before Sam. So it's it is three members from Full of Hell <laughs> in this band. Yeah, uh, but it's pretty. It's it hasn't been that hard because Jarhead's been so inactive um, for a while. But I think when everything, I don't know. I, I'd like to say go back to normal, you know. But in the in this like fairy world where everything goes back to normal uh yeah i think it's gonna be pretty hard to juggle you know both but also spencer has another band i flies and dylan has um he's in a couple projects but he he has another band with spencer called sword dream that just released a record today as well um which is sick uh, so there, there's, there's still a lot of side projects that go on, I guess, between those dudes as well. Um, but yeah, juggling both, it's, it, it'll be slightly difficult, I think. Um, but I really just want to tour. So like, as soon as it's, as soon as I'm able to just do that, that's cool with me. It's just full time doing that and not having to think, you know, about working a regular job or something when I come home. I'd rather just, I'd rather be gone. It's better for me at least you know? yeah when you when you're home working regular jobs what kind of you know stuff are you kind of doing uh i so i i do like anything i mean like i have like a lot at least like any jobs really i'm construction you know i end up working a lot of like construction and remodeling shit like that and then also um i do some retail stuff like high-end sunglasses on uh we got like a boardwalk i'm pretty i'm like 10 minutes away from the beach so I also work sometimes at like a high end sunglass shop on on the beach, you know, in the summertime. Nice. Yeah. Um, so like between that, there's a lot that I have a few other things, you know, I'm always like, I'm, there's always like four ways I'm making money, no matter what, right. you know, like I can't like <laughs> sleep at night without having <laughs> like other forms of income coming in at certain points. It, it, it bothers me, you know, no, so I yeah, had to, sure. have to do it. But, usually, yeah. usually dudes and bands are very resourceful and they usually end up doing something, you know, relative with, with resourceful for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which you were saying earlier, you have a pretty wild life. So like, I kind of wanted to talk enough about the music uh, before we kind of delve into that. But I guess, you know, I'm curious now because we got off topic with like the job situation and, and you being re resourceful. So, I'd like to dive into the wildlife of David Bland. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. My family is really crazy. I just, you know, my, my pops is a wild guy. He was like, you know, like uh, a lot of the album, it's crazy. So my dad just, my dad just died of COVID uh, last week. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Sorry. About um, that, man. No, it's all good. It's all good. I was even thinking about canceling this podcast, but I was like, no, no way. Like I, he, he's real supportive of what I do. So it's it's cool to like at least you know hash it out oh, damn, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, his funeral is actually tomorrow it's fucked up so weird it like coincides with a record release it's just, it's like oh wow it's yeah, an yeah, odd yeah. very odd things i like it's just weird how shit plans out like that very yeah. weird how a lot of the record is also like lyric wise about him so uh he's a crazy guy just the escape prison um wow he, yeah yeah uh that would have been, I mean, this is before I was born, but 
big skate prison from South Carolina and then went out down to New Orleans and helped run like a, one of the biggest escort services uh, in New Orleans. And that ended up getting the whole thing went down and like the main, other main guy of this, you know, escort service, you know, threw everybody under the bus. So my dad ended up getting like a long, long time prison. I mean, like 13 years total, wow. uh, like in maximum, which is, is wild. Cause like the whole thing got popped. So he was, you know, hit for that. Um, but wow. What a crazy guy is like his life story is just wild. And yeah, he's in jail with like, like like bodyguarding like like serial killers wow. you know watching like you know i mean he's had a wild life for sure he's an interesting guy it was like best guy i've known just 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 from how crazy and interesting i wish like you know i'd always told him like man i'd be sick if you did like a fucking radio show podcast just to explain everything that like yeah. hash out everything that went down but you know Time, times tell, I guess, you know, yeah, situation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, but there's a lot of, like, lyrical things based around just uh, his past, at least, that 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 comes out, like, on, on that record. You know, a lot of a lot of things are, like, mainly him, me watching, like, you know, like, a guy crumble because of his past, you know mm. what I mean? Because that shit eventually comes back up. Like, I never knew about it half my life. And then it was, like, boom, one day you find out like the hardest way, you know, like, yeah, like a corrupt uh, state marshal come to my house in Maryland from South Carolina. This dude like erased his file, uh, came and it raided the house. That's like how I found out my dad was like, oh, like they were all, my whole life, they're like, he, he never went to prison, you know? Right. Boom. Like, I mean, everything, I was young, so everything like didn't make sense to me, but then I was like, okay. So they, they took him away for like a month man, pay all these crazy court fees and jail fees and shit like that and, like, embarrass the fuck out of them just to be like, oh, yeah, you did serve your time, you know, we fucked up. And it was, like, right. the most wild shit I've ever seen. Like, it's still, I can still find, there's, like, a video, like, they dressed them up in, like, black and white stripes. Like, they don't do that shit right. to nobody. Like, <laughs> right. this, isn't, this isn't 19 fucking 20, you know? Like, there's, who does that? You know, they got to walk, like, the news, wait for them, like, oh, black and white, like, yeah. escaped convict, caught after 20 years. It's, like, yeah, you know, it makes a whole lot of sense. But I don't know. There's a lot of crazy shit in my family that that goes on, you know, just just dealing with I guess like my whole family's from Baltimore. So it's it's really like it's uh sometimes like, environment. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's sometimes people people uh I guess, you know, you just grow up seeing crazy shit. It's just it just depends. Family to family. I think everybody that's probably grew up there. At least that's not like some very high income person has probably seen like a lot of wild ass shit. Just even like, spending fucking like ten years there, you see, you see something crazy. You it's know? like the it's wire, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's like there's like, there's a sample from the wire on the on the record as well. Which, but, which one is that? Uh, it it happens in the your sacred. It enters your sacred world. That's that song. What's the what's the uh, what's the sins aren't the sins aren't uh, that's uh, um that's um um oh man I'm having a brain fart is that the narc is that the uh, annihilate the narc or whatever is that that silence song? Narc. yeah that's yeah, 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 on silence and narc yeah that's from Mean Streets sorry it's, well like we like we like like the mafia movies the first pro the first sample which is like lowered is uh is a departed sample it's like Jack Nicholson saying in the beginning. I'm not a uh, I'm not a product of my anxiety. My anxiety is a product of me. Uh, a product of my environment. Oh, okay. My environment, product to be. Okay. Be I thought it was the same anxiety, but then I was like, why? Yeah, that makes sense that the title would be product of your environment. But yeah. yeah. So you guys are big on uh, samples, huh? I like samples. Yeah. You know, we have, there's a little bit of like some like. Well, I mean, I just like samples in general, but there's like some mortician esque. Uh, there's a mortician cover on this record, so. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like that that kind of vibe comes from like the samples, but they're using more like horror samples and stuff like that, like mainly just horror samples and murder samples and shit. I don't know. It's kind of similar to that. I also like a lot of the West Coast power violence stuff. So a lot of that grindcore world is using uh, more like thug samples and stuff like that, which are kind of, you know, half mafia, half thug samples. Are right. Really with the, Speaking of thug yeah. samples and not to like, I don't know. Just put, you're bringing up like an urban vibe with like more of a hip hop situation. Your the artwork on the album is kind of like graffiti esque. So 
mm-hmm. when you you, yeah. you kind of seem to live in both worlds. You know what I mean? Like Moonlight in in both the heavy and the uh, I keep, I hate saying urban, but like hip hop rap side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like a song on there that's um. There's a song. I mean, it's uh called Agony Churning. That one is like supposed to be more of like a, a slow down like DJ Screw style vibe or something, which is mainly samples and stuff playing with just like a steady drum beat kind of, but real lowered and real real bass heavy. Um, there's definitely like a a hip hop vibe. I I have plans for for Jarhead at least to to eventually even record just a just a full DJ Screw style just slow rap album. You know, that's all. Are you there's gonna, a lot of uh, other rapping? stuff to do. Was that? Are you gonna do the rapping? Are no, I just like rapper? the samples and stuff. You know, I'm not rap. I'll I'll feature people. All right, right. But I like the beats. Yeah, you know? you'll just be the uh, you can guys, you guys can be like the death metal DJ Khaled. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you what do you listen to like all, different shit like all day long? Like you know, you're you're yeah. you're obviously I listen to a lot of jazz and stuff. But I mean, I'm listening to all kinds of shit, rap and stuff. Who you listen to right now? Uh, in general, not me, just in, in one genre, but in general. In general, I mean, there's a lot of just weird shit I also like listening to. I'm listening to like, um, right now I like Sam Cooke, The Meters, mm-hmm. uh, some weird like old like funk stuff like that. You know, Sun Ra, like Alice Coltrane, Coltrane, and um, I don't know. There's a bunch of other stuff. I also like, you know, I like a lot of like at least for newer rappers, like some of the Griselda people are pretty cool. Um, you know, the Conway, the machine and stuff like that. But I like a lot of weird shit like Ween, mm-hmm. you know. Uh yeah. You know. The soft side to you. Yeah, that's my <laughs> soft side. Um, I mean besides that, I don't know. There's other other cool things. I, don't know. I like the bug a lot. The bug is cool. Just like electronic stuff. Um I don't know. I guess probably I listen a lot less metal, you know, <laughs> the last last couple of months. Yeah. my life i was gonna but say like what uh, i still like i still like certain bands there's still classic bands i still listen to like you know immolation stuff like that right. uh, there's still plenty of classic there's also bands. definitely a point when you've kind of realized you've just immersed yourself in certain genres for a long period of time and like being in a band you can definitely do that that's why like most bands when they're listening to music in the van on tour it's something like completely different off the wall than like what they play or what they, what? The yeah, from I'm obsessed with drummer albums too. So I mean, a lot of times I'm just waking up, just throwing that on while I'm doing shit around the house, you know, stuff like that. Tony Williams, Billy Cobham, a lot of the new Full of Hell stuff is like there's some like jammy parts in it too. So a lot of influence from the drums is mainly just it's it's a ton of you know that style of drumming. Really, I'm a Tony Williams is like a god to me. So, you know, did you, I, did you just hear that as a kid and like got attracted to it? Or like, how did you get into the, or did you just like that music after getting into the drums? Yeah, I just like drummers, you know? So, I mean, like Tony Williams just being Miles Davis' drummer is the only reason I really like. Eventually, you just stumble across it after watching, you know, classic videos. Same thing with like Billy Cobham and other, uh, a lot of other, you know, people that are just around that world. Um, you just get on YouTube and then it's like, <laughs> it's a, you Black stumble hole, yeah. across anything after that. It's all related for the most part. So a lot of it's like, you know, you end up finding out cool things. And for me, beats, I'm like, are always really interesting. So the, the more I like the beat, the, preser- the person presenting the beat, the, you know, the more I like whatever group or whatever thing he does after that, you know? Right. So you, yeah, it's like a gateway into that person's other stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And there's a, lot, I'm, man, there's so many, so many good drummers, you know, like, and there's so many good bands that I think that I don't know, even simple rock bands that drummers make the band better just because of the way they play, mm-hmm. which is cool to me. Yeah, I just like watching people how they play. <laughs> yeah, even some like even some easy, easy sounding songs. They're just the new, like the small nuances make them like really complex, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. There's tons of drummers that do it well. Um, one of my favorite albums is uh, uh, Worship and Tribute by Glassjaw. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and um, years after it came out, I found out that the drummer for Godsmack was the drummer on that album. 
Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. They do say they did Godsmack does some cool shit. They got the fucking like the singer and the drummer. They get together. Right, they do right, the right, right. Drum solo <laughs> shit. And I when I was a kid, I loved fucking Godsmack when I was young. That first oh, yeah. album came out, I was like, and that's a new metal for me. It was for like, sure. you know, I was young enough, but that was pretty opened me up to a lot of other things. So I definitely I, grew I, up in the new metal scene too. Mm-hmm, when I was absolutely. A kid. My dad gave me like probably like. He loved new metal, so he used to give me like a stack of new metal CDs. I got everything, you know, when I was like 10. I was like, what? Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to ask, it's like what your dad was listening to, but it sounds like he was all, he kind of was your main influence. You know, like a lot of thrash. It's like basically like half thrash, half new metal, and everything like that you can think of. A lot know? of Machine like, Head in that, in that house? Yeah, he liked Machine Head. Yeah. He loved, uh, I mean, but like also like typical stuff, like, you know, corn, mm-hmm. like Slipknot, shit like that. At that point, it was still still popular yeah um he likes separator as well he gave me through me a cd when i was a kid it's really cool to see like the kids that are growing up listening to that music make music yeah. now so because they you know obviously they don't want to make that exact music and you know other genres have become big as well after new metal and after that that era of rock and yeah. but it, but it has those nuance like the if they they take the new music and mix it with those nuances and it's really cool some of those some of the yeah it's like it's cool just because i think i think those dudes were i mean obviously they're listening to good music while they're playing you know making what what it is that they were making at that time you know so it's like there's definitely things i think that come through that are like maybe i wasn't catching on them but i'll listen to now and i'm like oh okay yeah you like some cool stuff you know (laughs) well i will say this after i found out about uh you know godsmack's drummer doing the drums on worship and tribute i was like well i can't hate godsmack as much now yeah but it's cool um so yeah man um what's on the horizon for you know jarhead as soon as you can like what's what's in the plan since you released your album you're releasing your album tomorrow yeah man my next time my plan really is like we're gonna do a music video besides the music video we're really just um There'll probably be a couple from this from this record. I really next thing is it'll be a split with somebody, you know, whether it's rapper, whether it's band. Some there'll be another record for sure, like recorded by summertime. But um, I want to I want to really I want to like do the first like as soon as I can do a DIY tour. You know, I mean, as soon as things shape up like slightly, I, if it, if we could be the first people to do it, that'd be amazing. You know, but I guarantee that I'll do. A, a DIY tour immediately is even if we get like a limited chance, like we can have limited shows. Like right. I will a hundred percent immediately as that is available. A jarhead of, will hopefully tour before Full of Hell does, you know, just because Full of Hell's I think we'll probably if that happens, we'll probably wait it out and do something else. You know, I want Jarhead to like as soon as available, even like I even like I said, even if it's limited. I still want to just right, get out tour there. as soon as I can, you know? Well, you may have to do that, like, just avoid certain states. And I was going to say, I think, like, like again, Florida, you may you may even be able to play Florida now. I don't know. I'm not completely sure as to, you know, what the situation is. But I'm hoping by summer we have, like, an idea of, like, what we can do, you know? And if that is even, like, slightly, like, in the foresight of, like, we can play, like, even a few states – we'll do it yeah. you know immediately and i would love to be the first band to like come back on the tour you know <laughs> like, even if people are mad about of it of course you know? yeah i was gonna say you're definitely gonna have like a a bullseye <laughs> on you if you if you def, you know if you get out there hey first. look if somebody can have let me have limited shows then fuck okay yeah what about um when you when you say DIY tour like do you guys book your own tours or like does Close Casket help out with Jarhead stuff for that? So I think I mean um that I like I said I mean in the next it's just so hard to say um what's gonna happen but I think Jarhead will get a, a booking agent you know after this um we have like a decent amount of options I think it just depends really on really like this it's. it's not just be releasing a record after it having such like um like a hiatus for the most part um it's crazy to not be able to tour yeah. in a song that you release you know that's like what it's a scary thing almost but this being our first lp i don't think it, it does any damage necessarily you no know? a lot of people listen to music right now too you know what i mean a yeah. lot of a lot yeah. of a lot of albums have done better probably uh with coming out 
in the pandemic because more people are at home, more people are listening to stuff. So they got that stimulus. You that know? too. Yeah. That too. <laughs> These uh, kids that work from jobs. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys link up with Closed Casket? Uh, so Justin manages Full of Hell. Um, he's been the manager for a little while. Oh, okay. So we. This is the this is the the best option I we could have chose for for anyone releasing the record just because I think Justin's an amazing guy and uh, understands really, the vision. Yeah, he understands everything. Um, he's close with us as well. Plus, uh, it's he he's good at his job. He does really well and he cares. Whereas sometimes you see other people fade off of what they're doing and and be overwhelmed it's a very overwhelming position to be in for sure but uh he kills i mean he kills it in every aspect you know everything he does so you know awesome hats off to him really (laughs) yeah it's the best option i and plus it's like when you have when you're friends with somebody that's doing it for you it, it makes it that much easier and when they when there's no complaint to ever be had then there it really makes it the i mean it's the best option we could have ever had for for our first lp especially mm-hmm. you know it's amazing that's great um so to round it out here what are some albums that came out last year that you've enjoyed uh from the year 2020 Shit. <laughs> feel free to look at your phone for I know, any that's reference what I'm going on right now yeah that's our hard one I never have these lists prepared, so it's like yeah, I know. I kind of want to just see whatever pops in your head for the most part, but I know. <laughs> You've been listening to too much old music. That's the problem. That's what I'm telling you. It's really it's an it's an issue and. It's like when you try to think about something new that came out that you're like, wow, I really loved this. You know? Right. And certain things just make you want to listen to the other thing, you know, the what you've been listening to in general. That's the hard thing about listening to music sometimes. Sometimes I'll find a band and they sound like one way. And then I'm like, well, I'll just go listen to that instead. Like the band. I'm only like. listening to old music. I've got like, not, you know, I mean, the new body record that just came out, I love it. Mm-hmm. As that's, you know, as of new records, I've, pretty hard for me to like give anything just because that's been the that's that's the best one i'll give i'll leave it at one there you go boom the body (laughs) check it out kids all right man well uh david i greatly appreciate it man and again uh sorry about what's going on in your life and you know i we appreciate you for going through with this man and uh the best for you and your family going forward obviously but uh hopefully next time we meet We'll meet in person, and we'll uh, we'll Absolutely. be sitting on the couch having another one of these uh, talks, and we'll be able to talk about how nice it is to tour with Jarhead, you know. Yeah, and more weed. There you go. <laughs> yes, that too. Yeah. We'll both. Yeah, we can both bring some. We'll we'll kick in together. I have it. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not if you're listening. Uh, don't follow the tour, uh, the Full of Hell van or the Jarhead Fertilizer van. They don't have anything. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> All right, man. Well, take it easy. And again, thanks, man. Thank you.